So here we are, episode 93. Man, we are edging ever so close to episode 100. But today is going to be all about Pala. And of course, we're going to be running some vaults as well. At least that's my goal. Uh, but I do want to get Pala set up. And we are going to be going through some of the more interesting parts of Pala and the more detailed parts of Pala. And uh, taking a little bit of a deep dive into said mod. So let's jump in and take a look at what I'm talking about. So first of all, we have Ender Cells. And with the Ender Cells, we also have an Energy Cell as well. So we have inter in, uh, an Ender Cell and Energy Cell. Then we have a Player Transmitter. We have an, an, an Aerial Pearl and also Binding Cards. These are all things we're going to talk about today. Um, just getting started. So... Um, what do we need to do to get wireless power, Iron Golem? Huh? What do we need to do? Uh, well, you can't answer anymore. Uh, well, we need to go down here and uh, we need to make and, and automate all of these different processes. Well, not automate them, but we need to definitely make the resources. So I have been working on blazing material um, and I do have, I think, enough of it to at least make a few of these today. Um, blazing as you can see, we have 113, so we have a pretty decent amount of them. Um, and I have to go through and, and make every single one of these. So let's go ahead and start off with the Ender Cell and Energy Cell and what exactly those do. These are going to give us power similar to what like Flux Networks does. If you're familiar with Flux Networks, it's going to allow us to place an Energy Cell and then place another Energy Cell elsewhere. And those two will be linked. And it'll be very, very similar to how I've been using these dimensional cells from RF Tools Power. However, these are way better than these from RF Tools and way cheaper, by the way, way, way cheaper. Um, so to do this, I need to go ahead and craft up a few things. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go ahead and craft up the uh, the Ender Cell, which is this, which does require me to make an Ender Core, which is just these these things going in here. It doesn't cost that much power. Um, and then I also need an energy cell, which is going to, this is probably gonna be the most expensive part, but luckily I only need one at the moment. And honestly, the energy cell is basically this thing. And I don't, I don't even have to use energy cell. I could use a battery, but this right here, it's basically a, a mass storage. Um, but I am going to be hooking it up to the back here. So it will run through this storage. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember what the max transfer rate is on this. Uh, the max output because that might limit us just on this so eventually we might switch over but I don't know um, Either way, I'm gonna be making this so uh, I just need to make ender cells, which these aren't bad These are just obsidian and this is why this is so cheap. Look at this This is just obsidian and casing and this ender cell is what you place elsewhere To give power to things it is so cheap especially when compared to flux networks which Flux Networks I know has the capability of chunk loading, which is incredibly nice. I wish this pack just allowed you to chunk load um, or had some other means of doing so. But yeah, this uh, this is going to be really, really nice, especially for moving power. And the transfer rate on the ones I'm making, which are blazing, is 20,000 FE per tick or RF per tick, which is not bad at all. So I've got most of the hard part done. Uh, I've got uh, the energy cell crafted, which uh, I didn't realize, but this is like like multiplying crafting or micro crafting. I don't really know what you want to call this, but all these things have their own little crafts. These have their own little crafts. And then like you have to craft like four sets of the basic to make the hardened. And then if I was going to upgrade past this version, I would need these times four to make two of these which would be used to craft the next tier. Luckily, I'm only making the blazing, so it's actually not too bad to make the blazing. But still, like, if I needed more of these, that would be the case. But this holds 10 million, which isn't bad on top of what we already have here, which is uh, uh, 3 billion. So this will hold 3 billion, and then we'll have 10 mil on top of that, which is not, not bad. Plus, we charge up pretty fast as well. Um, so... We're going to need this, and then I was going to go ahead and just make the Ender Cell as it's so cheap. The Ender Cells, I'm so glad they're so cheap uh, because these just require Obsidian, and then the, you have to make the Ender Core itself. And uh, let's go ahead and make two of these just so we can see how these work. So the one that I'm going to place, or actually be replacing, I'm going to replace this right here. 
This was connected to everything, so I need to make sure that I, I understand that. Um, now, the Ender Cell, let's go ahead and connect that up. Now, by default, there's nothing going on, but we do have these different numbers here of channels. So we do have different channels. So technically, I could have multiple networks, I believe, is how this works, um, is I can have multiple Ender Cells, and they're all be on their own different network. And then I could just assign these energy cells here to this network. Now, this does need some power. This, uh, this has the ability to transmit power, but as you can see right now, it has no power storage. So that is where the energy cell comes in and you just shift right click it in. And uh, now you see it is starting to build up power, which is great. And as you can see, yeah, this is actually outputting 20,000. So this does support the 20,000, which is perfect. And bam, that is filling up quite fast. Now, we need to get our power over before this starts to run out of power. And uh, to do that, I believe, actually, is this connected to anything? Okay, it is connected to power. So I just wanted to make sure. And if I place this here, this is going to take the place of the other one. So now this is sending power on channel one and should be keeping everything nice and powered up. Perfect. Replacing our dimensional cells. Now, there's a few of them that I need I need to replace. Um, let's see. I didn't have one over here anymore because we actually have this all wired up. I wish I would have had this earlier. Um, but I do have another one that is in our tree. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about wireless power and how this works. This is not the only method of transferring power. However, it is a really nice method of doing it because... For one, it gives you 20,000. It does take up a full block and it's not, it's actually cheaper than the other method I'm about to talk about. Um, so the other method is using these things, which are called gates. So um, I would have to make a gate here. This is called a uh, an ender gate. And I would basically connect this ender gate to a cable and then connect another ender gate to another cable. And I would have a little bit of wireless power in that way. Um, so it, it works very similar to this, except this is connected to the power lines or power cables, and then you connect it up to a machine. Um, so that would work, but I do like this method right here a little bit better, a little bit more control. And uh, even though it's a full block, technically these are full blocks as well. And also, as you can see, this has a limited transfer rate of 18,000 FE per tick versus 20 for what it is, and the cables are not too bad. Actually, we can probably go ahead and try this out. Let's go ahead and make these cables. Let's see. I just need a few of these. And what? A few of the cells. Let's see. We can make 12 of these cables. And then I can go ahead and just make this to connect to the cables. Right. So we have these. Uh, apparently with me placing them individually, <laughs> they're like that. Uh, do I have a machine that could use power? Um, do I have a mechanism machine that's just laying around? Here's a mechanism battery that is empty, right? So what I can do is I can place this down. Um, let's just run a cable off of this, for example, and we'll place this on here. Now, this is hooked up to the same sort of thing, right? You can see we have this, this network here of, of this. And uh, this network can be transferred to this and this should be filling up you can see right there it is filling up and getting this and keeping this nice and charged so yes this is a wireless or a cableless way of uh of charging which is very nice i like that i'm gonna keep those in mind and uh yeah it's not too it's not too hard to set up so we could literally power just about anything here in our base if we want to with power uh very similar to this mod that's in here which is called Flux Networks. So Flux Networks works basically the same way, um, except it's a lot more expensive. Look at the look at this. I know that it's expensive in resource as a, you know for getting into power, whereas this you know you pretty much get right into. But this is just the Flux Point, the Flux Plug, which is how you receive power into your network. Look how expensive this is, and then not to mention how much opal and then flux blocks you're gonna be using to get into the power storage. Each one, this one requires a pog. The next one requires an omega pog to literally store 128 million 
into a network. That is nothing. Remember, we are storing with mechanism, oh, what, three billion? Yeah, the G stands for, for billion. So yeah, I, I think this is a much better, I, I'm glad we used our points for this and, and not Flux. However, Flux does have the ability to chunk load like I've mentioned before. All right, so what should I do? Well, I think I should make another one of these, another cell. And as you can see how easy that, that is to craft. And we're just gonna go ahead and even over here, replace this. I know I have to manage the cable. Replace this with all these. And I could probably, instead of having these cables, I can just hook directly into these without having all these wires all over the place. So this still connects, as you can see, we're still hooked up to our power. And we could probably use ender gates, honestly, to hook into these. That would probably work a little bit nicer. For right now, I'm gonna hook this back up. There we go. And that replaced our setup we already have. You may be wondering like, why, why are you replacing what already was working? Well, these work better and I'm wanting to switch my whole network over to this and, and not using the RF tool stuff uh, because the RF tools just for one is expensive and the transfer rate on them is like 1000 RF per tick on the basic versions and then the upgrade to the other tiers. Uh, yeah, they, they end up costing way more. And not to mention the further away that you put them, they do lose uh, efficiency. So the further away they are from each other, they lose efficiency, which I mean, I like the concept of that. It's just, I don't have to worry about it with, with this mod. Now, one more thing, I, I promise this is the last part. If you're uh, kind of like, ah, I'm, I'm done with this is uh well, wireless player charging. And uh, we are gonna be setting that up. However, this does require an interesting mechanic. As you can see, I need this thing called a player transmitter. And uh, to make this, the first thing we need is this pearl. So uh, let's take a look at the crafting recipe for that. Pretty simple. And I think it just now happens to be dark. What we need to do with this is actually capture a zombie. So there should be a zombie laying around here somewhere. Right there's a zombie. If I can use this, I think you have to you have to punch it? Punch the zombie? There we go, I captured it. So, I right clicked on it, and uh, it is now mine. <laughs> so you actually need this for the player transmitter. Consider it the brain of the operations. Uh, so I'm gonna take this back, and this is what we're gonna use to craft the base tier of this whole setup. Yeah, uh, and man, I tell you what, you make a lot of these rods. That's just like all it's used for. So, let's grab this, and we will make our first tier. There we go. So, we have a player transmitter starter. The next upgrade for that is going to, of course, be these capacitors. We need to make this. It looks like every single upgrade is going to require a frame, isn't it? So now we're on basic, and we'll keep going. Like I said, you make tons of the rods. <laughs> you know, I've kind of, like, stopped showing a lot of crafting in my videos. I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys like that? I don't I don't know if you guys want to see all the crafting. I figured that's probably not something you want to see. All right, we're going to get this up to the last tier, which is going to be this. Man, all the things that I have to have to get going here. Last but not least, that then this, and of course, I'm out of the dielectric paste. Uh so yeah, you get to see all the little stumbles when I do this. All right. So there we go. Now we're done. And last but not least, the frame. And then we have a player transmitter blazing. And then we also need to make a binding card. Now this part is uh, pretty straightforward. I'm going to use this to make a blink card. Bam. And there we go. And it says right click to bind. You actually need to do this to yourself. So now it is bound to me. And we have a player transmitter. So what I can do with this is honestly, I can just place it right here just to make it look interesting. You know what? I'm not going to place it here. Let's place it downstairs on the back of this. And we'll just place it right there connected to that. Right. And so that is building up. And as you can see, this actually stores 5 million in itself. And then all I got to do is place the binding card in here. And what this will do is this will, while I'm in the overworld, 
it will charge up not only my battery that's right here, it'll keep everything in my inventory charged up so long as I am in the overworld. So I will always have a charge. This is gonna be really nice when we go to unlock jetpacks. Uh, cause we'll always have jetpacks in the overworld. Now, there is a way to do this cross-dimensionally. Yes, there is. And, uh, it is another card, uh, that is in here. So, let's say player, or actually card. And this one is called the binding card dimensional. Yes, uh, and it requires you to get the max level transmitters, two of them, max level, uh, gates, and then also an Omega Pog and two Vault Block Diamonds. Uh, this will be something that eventually I will work towards. This will keep us fully charged even inside the vault. Uh, but this is a nice alternative. Every time we come back from the vault, it'll automatically keep our stuff charged. And then when we go back in, we don't have to worry about charging anything. I don't have to worry about keeping my grid charged. Ah, life is good. You know what? Life is good at this point. So, uh, well, with that, I think we should run some vaults. Yeah, for sure. So before I jump into the vaults, I do have a few things to do first. And that is vault stew and vault burgers. So the stew, that's gonna bump me up a little bit. Let's go ahead and eat the burgers. Oh, by the way, I probably need to uh, grab, let's see, I need to grab my, uh, my eat fasty thingy. <laughs> the gluttony charm. There we go. I need to eat. I need to use this because uh, that's going to speed everything way up. So, how quickly can we eat these? Obviously not fast enough, but we should have enough burgers to get us to level 150. If not, we're going to be very close because I want to be at 150 before we start running vaults. Oh boy. So, yeah, definitely each level I want to consume this. I think that's going to help us. There's another level that's 45. Let's eat the stew and continue to eat our burgers. Oh boy. Let's see. One, two, or one, two, three, four, five. We should. This should totally be enough burgers. If our luck is with us on the percentages, if we get more three percentages than anything else, we should be good. Let's eat the 40% gain and continue our merry way. Oh boy. And last but not least. We have a few burgers left. Look at this. 150. Yes, yes, yes. We're at 150. And that was perfect. That was literally just enough burgers. Ah, we wouldn't have made it without that soup. For sure, that we wouldn't have made it. So now that we're at 150, we should have a, a new loot pool, which is going to be kind of interesting. I'm not actually quite, sh I'm not really sure how this is going to work, but uh, we're going to work through it, I guess. Um, now, some things that I want to do now that I'm at 150 is I want to take a dank into the vaults now. And uh, I want to take this into the vaults and I want to put vault gear inside this. Now, I think at 150, we should start getting, um, let's see, vault gear. We should start getting... Uh, what is it? Rare or ep uh, not rare? Yeah, we should start getting rare now as tier two gear. Um, so we'll have tier two that'll be a guaranteed, I believe guaranteed scrappy. All scrappy gear should be tier two. Uh, I believe all uncommon gear now should be tier two. And uh, now we'll have a chance to get rare tier two gear. I believe that's how that goes. Or at least that's how it looked last time. Um, so let's let's run a vault i'm gonna go ahead and make a new dank let's run a vault and let's see what we can't get into this day so i have my gear dank here i'm gonna go ahead and upgrade it i went ahead and made the storage upgrade this cost a little bit of vault diamonds it's not actually too bad to do the second upgrade you shift click on it while it's inside this and as you can see i have a much larger inventory here now i need to be very very careful while i'm in the vaults um, what I'm going to end up doing is probably just opening the vaults. I'm going to keep this in my inventory here, and I'm going to be kind of switching between. Uh, it's, this is going to take a little bit of time to do this because I need to get gear in here. So it's not going to be the the best situation in the world. Consider this uh, this run probably a wasted crystal, um, but I'm going to make it through. All right, so first vault of the day. I'm going to make sure to put this in here. We have our vault gear, which is going to go here. I'm going to try my best to do this and hopefully take my time. And let's hope that this isn't a locked vault or anything like that. 
that would just make things even harder. All right, we'll go in. I'm gonna try and take my time. Give me some good modifiers. Come on, Vault Gods. Trapped Afterlife, oh my gosh, Chaotic Hard? Really, it's Chaotic? This is not gonna work with Chaotic at all. This is, oh, I thought I was gonna be rolling some Vault Gear. I don't know if that's gonna be possible with it being Chaotic. And mobs move 10% faster. No way. No way. By the way, I have to check every chest like this before breaking them. Because, like I said, that just the modifiers. The modifiers alone. That is going to be awful. What other things were there? That trapped, resilient, chaotic, hard, fast. <sighs> yeah. That's going to be a problem every time. So now the main thing that I definitely want to open up, like these I'm not going to really worry about opening. It's the... Uh, the other chests, like it's the uh, the gilded ones. And did we roll gilded on this? Yes, we did. Man, this would have been perfect had it not had, I just, I'm just gonna have to run this vault like normal and hope that we get another modifier later on. I might have to just make a vault that just doesn't have mobs and is gilded just to make this possible because this is just not gonna be possible otherwise. You know what I could do? I could probably set this to just pick up all. And then just anything extra that is not getting picked up well by everything else. Like, I think I just got a piece of gear in there. Yeah, I could just do this. And then I'll just make sure to just throw everything else out. Oh, wait, no, it's picking up literally everything. Oh, this is just not yet. No, I'm going to have to do it the other way. Oh, my gosh. And I get the perfect room here. Oh, you know what? Like, this is the kind of stuff. I definitely should be having this open because look, there's another identified piece of gear. Let's turn this to pick up all. I don't know if it matters where the positioning is. I want this to pick up everything because I'm, I'm just about to open this. Is this picking up everything else? Yes, it is. Why? Why is it doing that? All right, hopefully this works. And then this one, and now I gotta open all of these manually first before breaking them all. Because I want any chance of rolling bulk gear out of this, I want it to be picked up by my dank. Oh man, and we get hit with all of that. Oh, there's an unidentified. Well, these are gonna be really nice, like if we are able to just pick all these up, like leave them unidentified like this. So I'm trying my best. There's something that needs picked up. There's a lot of things running around it. There we go. It got picked up along with multiple other things. Oh goodness. <laughs> All the chaos right here going on is just nutty. I am so ready to get out of this vault. This vault is just increasingly worse and worse. It's just, the more I do it, the more, the more this vault is horrible. With the chaotic and hard, no thank you. Like, I'm, I'm ready to get out of this place. Oh boy. So before I lose too much more of my sanity in this vault, it's time for me to get out of here. Oh my goodness, this has been such a hectic vault. But I did get a few things rolled in here. As you can see, I do have a few unidentified pieces. I think I'm still missing what an unidentified axe? And also an unidentified pants. And I think that's it, right? That's all I need. And then it'll all just build up here instead of going into my inventory, which oh, would be so much nicer. Even though that vault was pretty rough. I mean, we did get quite a few vault diamonds. I mean, we got three out of that, which I was, was way more than I thought. And we got uh, several mod boxes. I don't know if those Pandora's boxes were from the vault. But we only got 14 catalyst fragments. That's one thing. I wish we just got more catalyst fragments in the vaults. It just feels like we should get more catalyst fragments. Oh, we also got a rune as well for X marks to spot, which is uh, another thing. I am saving my runes. Um, you may be wondering why I'm not using runes all the time, because I want to have runes for really nice vaults. 
such as this right here, such as the CRP vault right here, um, I want to have runes for that. So, for example, like this one, definitely want a, uh, what is it going to be, a mine room? I just don't know if I have any in here uh, for the mine room, but we do have, like, puzzles, and we have X marks to spot, and we have caves and viewer rooms uh, and dig sites for other, other sort of events. Um, but yeah, so I went ahead and made myself a crystal that is gilded, trapped, lucky, freezing, hunger, uh, super lucky, frail, tired, safe zone, vulnerable, withering, resilient, a nerd, slowed, super speed, difficult, personal space, giant, and we can maybe wondering why I have all these modifiers when I literally just need to get gear from it. Uh, that's just what happens when you literally are trying to get something like personal space and uh, super lucky just happened to get on here, but I put gilded and lucky first. Um, this does go in the order from top to, to bottom of the order that you put the modifiers on, so keep that in mind. And uh, personal space just happened to be the thing I was looking for. So hopefully things don't bother me. And we have safe zone, which is going to be pretty nice. So I need to swap. I need to use this idol for the resistances. And I think I am ready to run this vault. I need to make sure my gear is there. And get the shovel out of the way because I had to mine snow. Oh, goodness. So much snow. Uh, for this crystal and I think that's it. I think we are Ready to jump into this vault have everything ready to go and the gear Whoo, so all we need I think all we're missing uh, now that we have an idol which actually is kind of rare to get um, Is the axe unidentified axe and unidentified pants and helmet and that is all we're missing and Then we can start using this thing and start running vaults carelessly again Ah <sighs> So, let's do this. May the vault gods be ever in our favor. Uh, it's not the greatest that we have uh, this. We have what? Uh, let's see, three things that can spawn in a chest. Ouch. But I mean, that's just how it's gonna be, I guess, for right now. Oh, at least we got plus one luck. So we actually have a really high luck modifier going on right now. Which is fantastic, especially for these gilded chests that we encounter. Speaking of gilded chest, uh, I definitely want to look at every single one I open. Specifically looking for that gear. Very old fashioned. Reminds me of when I first started, you know, looking at all the chests to see how they're, what they're going to potentially roll. So there is my pants. I just got my helmet. The pants are right here. So just have to collect this. And we are list literally missing one piece, which is a vault axe. And I think that is it on this whole list. And then I can get back to normal, normal farming. Normal farming, which by the way, I've already seen a ton of vault diamonds this run, which is kind of nice. You know what's funny? This whole time I thought that these chests felt kind of slow to mine. And then I realized I have mining fatigue. What? This is mining fatigue? Like this is, this doesn't even feel that slow. It just, it felt ever, ever so much slower, but like not enough for me to really be super concerned. I didn't even realize I had one plus one tired on here, giving me plus one mining fatigue. It doesn't even feel that slow. This, this pick is crazy. So I now have turned everything in, so uh, we should no longer be seeing things turn up that uh, are related to this uh, scavenger vault. So hopefully we'll be able to get that last piece of armor that I need, or I guess tool that I need. I need to get that vault axe out of there. And uh, that should be turning up. Hopefully, hopefully we get that. There is a small chance that we don't, but I mean, eventually we will get it. Ooh, right here is the unidentified axe. I just barely made this. Barely. And we are done. Filtered pickup. We'll set all of this to filtered. And now, anything we pick up that is vault gear will now go in there from this point forward. Ah, oh, what a relief. What a relief. Now I can go ahead and head back. And this vault has served its purpose. And uh, I think we got plenty of vault diamonds from it as well. We're going to be able to check that because a lot of these chests had like two vault diamonds or more in them. Kind of, kind of awesome. 
And just like that, I'm out. I got everything I wanted to get done, done. That was a perfect run for this vault gear. And uh, now gear can build up in here. And the good part is I can just put it inside there and uh, it should be able to filter out. Now, I don't quite know exactly. I can pull out one at a time and then that would cause problems if I shift click. I think it dumps everything out. I don't actually know. I would have to kind of test that. Like if I was to control Q, does it drop everything out and leave just one? That's what you would hope. But I, I don't really have anything like that to test with. Um, but anyways, instead of it going in here like this, I can now just think of this as my storage for compressed blocks. Honestly, all the compressed blocks will probably end up going in here and I'll just make this uh, gear and blocks and we'll have plenty of space. And then we'll just never have to worry about the junk that builds up. This is gonna make running vaults so much easier. So before we end today, I do need to spec my points. Now I have 13 skill points available and uh, that means, well, I had to do a little bit of uh, thinking here because we did unlock the ability to upgrade Ward. However, the only thing Ward is going to give us, which keep in mind is not a bad thing, is going to give us 25% parry chance. I believe that's what that means. Um, or maybe that's a chance. I, I, have, I have no idea. So it's choosing Ward negates healing, but over here it talks about parry and while full absorption shield. And then apparently this is supposed to be parry. So 25% parry is nice and it's but it's only a chance um so that's that's really nice but we have the ability to upgrade speed one more time and strength which i'm thinking about skipping strength and going straight for fatal strike here um since our strength is already pretty high speed definitely i'm gonna go ahead and just skip ward for now and we're definitely going this now fatal strike is gonna cost five but once we unlock this it should allow any gear that we have that has Fatal Strike stuff on it uh, to, to work now. So I don't know if I have any gear down here. If I can get down. There we go. Um, I don't know. Does any of these guys have Fatal Strike? Oh, this does. Okay. So we do have Fatal Strike damage right here and 8% chance. So if I unlock Fatal Strike, I should be able to repair this act, which is the one I prior I had prior. And uh, this should be a really good axe. So let's go ahead and spec this. This is going to be five points, leaving us to three. I don't know if I have to unlock these in order for them to function with this. We'll find out. But by default, we have a 5% chance um, by default. Now, we do have other points I can spend. I have three more points. I have nothing else really in this that I want to invest the points into, except for this, which is execute. I want to go ahead and just put the remainder points in execute so that way now whenever we do attack it should be closer to like 50 percent um what how many points do you have four points so 80 percent of it so yeah the scaling damage based on the target's total missing hit points instead of their max hit points so right there we're at about 80 percent so whenever we get this thing to near half health we should be able to one shot it hopefully um instead of getting it down you know slightly under uh, so that's going to do a lot of damage to the bosses, but so far, I think we're good. That extra point in speed may not be super noticeable, but it is incredibly noticeable in the vaults, considering this is max speed that we can get from this point forward. No longer will we be able to go any faster than this unless we get something like super speed or things like that, which those modifiers will make us incredibly fast. Like, whoo, I'm excited. So I'm excited to run some more vaults. Of course, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you guys have a great weekend moving forward. Uh, as of right now, I still have no challenge cards. So unfortunately, no challenge crystals or anything like that. Even for next week, it's just not gonna happen unless I get a challenge crystal somehow or a challenge card. So with that being said, I do wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that huge thanks is going to go to Call Me Han. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member. And of course, guys, if you're interested in joining the Discord, all you got to do is go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. Join the amazing crew over there. And of course, guys, I will see you in the next one. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give this video a good old smack on that thumbs up button. Comment down below if you found something interesting, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, 
Thanks for watching.